Welcome back to the channel. We once again have the two-door JK up here in the shop, and that's because it is finally time to install a full suspension lift kit on this. Now, I realized that my channel name is JK Gear and Gadgets, and I've yet to ever do a how-to on how to install a full suspension lift on a JK. A few years back, we did the Clayton Off-Road Overland Plus on the JT, and a lot of it does transfer over, but in this video, we are gonna install a full suspension lift kit, but we're also gonna dive into some of the most commonly asked questions or tips in regards to installing a suspension lift kit. You know, pretty much everybody can figure out how to put a spring in, put a shock in, but the most commonly like misunderstood part is how to actually set up your adjustable control arms, your adjustable track bars, and how do you make sure you're getting the longest life out of your bushings and lift kit that you possibly can. We have the JK back down on the ground so we can take one last look at the before. You know, there's zero suspension lift on this. We are running the 33s, the KBD flares, so it opens up a little bit of that wheel arch, but the suspension itself is the stock 180,000 mile Jeep Wrangler suspension. So we have some really good stuff to replace it here. First things first, we're gonna go ahead and remove the spring and shocks on both sides of the front axle. That way we can slide the new lift springs and longer Bilstein shocks in place. I started off by removing the shock nut up on top, the sway bar end link, and then went ahead and did the track bar as well. Now, if you're doing this job on the ground, you won't raise the body of the vehicle. You'd actually take your wheels and tires off and lower the axle down. So it does the exact same job. But at this point, we should be able to just simply Pull our old spring out, unbolt the old shock, and slide the new ones in. There we go. Something just self-removed itself. Yep, looks like this spring said it was ready to go. shocks banded up. Usually you just go ahead and start on the bottom bolt to get that in. And then just help guide it up in place. Boom. There's a few things we need to check before we move on to the adjustable components. And that is, it's really simple. The few things I like to check is make sure this bushing up here is centered in the top post mount. There's a hole and the bushings actually have a little lip that sits up in there. So make sure that sits in place and then get it snug. Secondly, our coil spring on the perch down here, there's an alignment tab. Make sure our spring is right in that alignment tab. We have our bump stop installed. Next thing to do is go ahead and put weight on the Jeep whether that's jack stands under the axle or throw the tires back on, that's because we have to start working on centering our track bar or centering our axle from left to right. So we've already disconnected the frame side. We're gonna have to go over here, pull this track bar out of there. And now is a great time to check for play in the bolts. If your holes are wallowed out, gotten bigger over time, this is a great easy cause of death wobble. So you can either go with a uh, 9 16th bolt, grade eight bolt, or get a set of weld washers, which we have laying up there, and put a little weld washer on there to fix that mounting surface. So that's a lot of rambling. Let's go ahead and start centering the front axle with the track bar. With the weight back on the Jeep's suspension and the track bar removed, it's time to center the axle. So with no track bar, we could literally push the Jeep from left to right. And that's what we're trying to accomplish is find that center line. Now, if you have two people, it makes it a lot easier. You can measure from a spot on the frame to the inside of your tire or some similar characteristics on both sides. Find that number, set your track bar, and then you'd be good to go. But if you're by yourself, it might take a little bit of trial and error. So what we do is measure our stock track bar. Pretty wimpy design, but mine measured out to be like 32 and a half inches. What I went ahead and did was just set our Clayton track bar a little bit longer than that. I went ahead and set it to 32 and three quarters, which is half an inch longer. We're gonna install it, see how it looks, take some measurements, and we might have to readjust. But we're gonna do that until our frame is perfectly centered with both sides. Usually, once we lift the Jeep, we have to lengthen our track bar. It's just a little bit of math. You know, the Pythagorean theorem, the slope is gonna need to increase if this 
height gets larger, such as a lift. And like always, we do wanna leave our jam nuts loose until we are fully buttoned up with all of this. That way our joints don't get put in a bind whenever we're setting this up. And remember, we're still installing this loose. Now that we have the axle centered up under the Jeep, I went ahead and pulled the wheel and tire set up off just so I can kind of show you guys what we're talking about. So the next step is to recenter our wheelbase. What happens is when we lift the Jeep or raise the springs, the axle is gonna wanna swoop down a little bit and back, just the natural arc of those lower control arms. So what we need to do is bring it back, which means extend it further, and we can actually kind of see what's happening here. The spring is bowing up and out a little bit, which means we need to push the axle forward and maybe angle it back a little bit. Clayton is pretty well known for their heavy duty control arms. You know, it's two inch square tubing. These things are almost indestructible. They're very heavy duty, but more importantly are their new gyro joints. They're actually not new. They've been around for a few years. And this is the setup, the Overland Plus arms with the gyro joints that I've been running in the Gladiator for a little, like about almost three years now. And I think we've put over 35,000 miles on it on the lift kit and we haven't touched the suspension at all. So the joints are extremely impressive and they still flex really good off-road. And I don't wanna make this a comparison vi video by any means, but you know, a Heim joint is gonna offer us a lot more misalignment, a lot more flex. I love it on the JK, but it's not necessarily the best choice for a daily driver. Here we had an old Rubicon Express with like a uh, knockoff Johnny joint style. I blew those all the time. They just, they weren't designed that well. And then on this side, we have your typical rubber bushing with a metal sleeve and that that probably led to that joint blowing out just because it doesn't have much flex. Now the gyro joints, they offer the flex and they still have that return to center. Whereas a Heim joint and some of these aren't gonna wanna return or spring back to center. And the only reason I'm bringing this up is because depending on your joint style is gonna depend a lot on how you should install it. So if you have a return to center joint, if this thing is up on the lift and the suspension's fully drooped out, our axle is gonna be swung over to the side. So when we install these, it might be put in a bind and by the time we lower it, our readings are all skewed. So what we're doing for the lower control arms, we're gonna set this a little bit longer than stock. Clayton actually gives us some starting points here. Looks like I'm gonna start mine right around 23 inches. We're gonna make sure they're both set at 23 inches with a ruler or just lining them up, putting the bolt in and then we're gonna get these under the Jeep. As long as we have both lower control arms in set to the exact same length, our wheelbase is good. We might have to do that a few times to find exactly where we wanna center the axle forward and back. But next is time to worry about the upper control arms. So this is where our caster reading and pinion angle come into play. That's what the upper control arms do. Now with the stock upper control arms, we do need to extend them out because clearly our pinion angle is actually a little bit negative. We need to raise that up so we don't have a lot of vibrations. But on the other hand, we have our caster reading. The further back the angle of the ball joints, the better it's gonna drive straight ahead. Now that is a fine line between our pinion angle and caster. There's only six degrees of separation between the two. So right now we have eight degrees caster, which means our pinion angle is about negative two. Now we do have to keep in mind that when we lift the rear end of the Jeep, these angles are gonna change, but this is more just kind of showing you how to set up your upper control arm. We need to bring the axle forward, which means extending our upper control arms. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and remove both upper control arms and start with one, at least the driver's side upper control arm to dial in our pinion angle. I went ahead and threw the tire back on because I got that driver's side set to where my pinion angle and caster are good. So everything is still loose and we can actually like see the suspension moving back and forth. All we have left to do is throw in this last upper control arm. Now we don't have to worry about length on this one since our pinion angle is set, our caster is set, our wheelbase is set. 
we're just gonna thread this in however long or however short it needs to go to make it work. What some people will try to do is make this side match the exact same number that we just installed. Sometimes it's not that happy and you can actually end up putting your bushings in a bind, both on the axle and on the frame side. So don't worry too much about this length. It should be, you know, pretty close to one another, but it doesn't have to be exactly on spot. And just like that, we are done with the front suspension. With the exception of the brake lines and the sway bar tabs, all of the hard stuff is complete. So everything's located, it's good to go. The axle's right where it needs to be. I'm happy with it. At this point, with the Jeep down on its full weight, we can go ahead and start torquing all the bolts, all the jam nuts, and we'll be good to go. We just don't wanna do that when everything's up in the air because it can create unneeded stress. Now, speaking of torquing, if you do not have a set of crow's foot wrenches. These are extremely helpful when working with jam nuts. You know, instead of using a pipe wrench or something to try to, you know, tighten that big, large nut, that just chews it up. Get a set, I'll throw a link in the video description to a set like this, as well as the Barnes four-wheel drive steel cutout ones, which are a little bit cheaper and perfect for like a trail bag. But let's keep moving on. I'm gonna get the Jeep back up on the lift. We're gonna start in the rear, same process as before get the new springs and shocks in place. So Mike came over to help assist start on the rear and it turns out right off the bat there's already an issue. So I started pulling off the rear tires and we have a seized lug nut right here. I'll go ahead and show you. This is the big, the big boy. Nothing. We'll try it with a big breaker bar and see if that breaks it free. So at this point, we have the new spring shocks and the lower control arms in, as well as the, uh, the rear track bar and the track bar bracket. I really like this design, mostly because a lot of the kits, if you do get one that does not incorporate like bolting into the axle tube, go ahead and skip it, because a bracket that only bolts onto this factory metal here, it's just gonna rip off. So Clayton does give us a really beefy rear track bar bracket which raises our roll center. Of course, the rear uh, track bar, I just went ahead and put it to the setting that they put in the specs, as well as the rear control arms, both set at 20 inches, bolted in. All we have left to do at this point is to worry about the upper control arms, which is going to dial in only our rear pinion angle on the rear. We don't have to worry about caster, so all we have to do, right now we are at ride height. The jack is pushing up on the axle. We need to address our pinion angle. We gotta bring it up. So we're gonna extend our upper control arm. We're gonna disconnect the one over there and focus on this one, adjusting it to give us a good pinion angle. I went ahead and threw this bolt in. And over here, since the axle is still supported, we could just make this match. So it looks like that's pretty close. I can thread it in one more and it looks like it'll line up a little bit better. And finally, all we have left to do is torque everything down to spec. So as you can tell, I've went ahead and put the wheels and tires back down, lowered the Jeep down, and it's looking really good. The 33s are throwing it off a little bit. We can definitely bump up in tire size. Now, one thing I do wanna point out, so now that we've lowered everything down, before we torque all of our control arms down, we're gonna check and make sure our pinion angles are good, make sure our wheelbase is good. I could go ahead and see that if we were gonna go 35s on this, we would have to extend our wheelbase even more because we're a little little bit closer up there. So what we would do in this scenario is go ahead and disconnect our lower control arms and extend them both to the, the same length. Say we started at 20, we need to push this back, we might push them to 20 and a half, even on both sides, and then address our pinion angle 
down there with our upper control arms. Disconnect both of those, set it with one singular arm, and then go ahead and put the other arm in place. Same with the front where we're battling that mixture of caster and pinion angle. I have a video on that a while ago. On a JK, a lifted JK, you're shooting for four to six degrees of caster, and that's gonna give you about two degree pinion angle. Depending on your drive shaft, you might have to focus more on your drive shaft angle or your pinion angle if you have a bunch of vibrations. But all of that's kind of irrelevant. The main thing I wanted to focus on was really setting up all of these adjustable components. And as long as you install your suspension components in the correct order, you should see a lot longer life out of your entire joint system. Whether you're on Heim joints, Johnny joints, Clayton gyro joints, it really doesn't matter. Preloading your suspension can really shorten the lifespan of everything and it's gonna ride really crappy. So as long as you follow these guidelines, you should be good to go. Now there are different kinds of joints out there, like a, uh, a Heim joint suspension. It's gonna be a little bit looser because there's no return to center. And that's also why a Heim joint doesn't care what angle it's sitting at. Opposed to these gyro joints, which still give us a lot of off-road flex but they are a return to center joint which is going to help out with some of the on-road characteristics driving this thing you know the suspension isn't going to be as loose but if we set these up and they're already at a preloaded angle the joint's not going to last as long because that's not how it's designed to sit so in this case this clayton arm is straight this is for a jt but that one down there actually has an angle and the joints are still designed to sit at a neutral location let's go ahead and start torquing everything down so we can get the jeep out of the shop and take a look at it i went ahead and found the the two sizes we need it looks like one and a, one and one and a half and one and 13 16 are the sizes for the clayton lowers and uppers as well as the front and rear track bars even if you do have a wrench this size it can be hard to get to like 150 foot pounds on these adjustable control arms so being able to have a crow's foot that can hook up to a breaker bar much much easier the jeep is all squared away buttoned up ready to go still haven't done the brake lines yet but that's really not a big deal we have a lot of cool stuff in store for this jeep and i'm excited to start you know start some of those videos up but until then like always hopefully you guys learned something from this video and as always if you have any requests or questions go down to the comment section and let me know and i'd be more than happy to try to knock something out for you guys but until the next video please give this one a thumbs up subscribe to the channel and i will see you guys next week